Good day, everybody. Today we're going to look at topic 10, gases. So this topic, we actually covered it before the holidays, and I felt like it was important for us to actually do a recap and really finish up this topic. In this whole unit, we're going to learn about the composition of air. Compo composition or composing, it has to do with the English term, especially when you're learning in English, you make compositions. And in your compositions, there's a lot of words. But here, we're talking about air. So what are the types of gases that are found in the air? And how many percent are there, like in the air? Number two, why air is considered a mixture. So we're going to see what is the term mixture and why is air a mixture instead of a compound or just an element. Number three, the properties of gases in the air and their uses. And also number four, we're going to look at how to test for the main gases in this topic. We're going to look at oxygen, carbon dioxide, water vapor, and also some other gases. But today we're not going to look at hydrogen because that's quite a bigger unit than this. So we're going to look at that in another lesson. The step to success from before our classes was that we needed to list out gases that mix together to make dry air. So what are those gases and how are they or what do they have to do with dry air? Number two, you need to mention about how many percent of them are found in dry air. And also number three, state the properties of those gases. You need to know about their uses and also the methods on how to test oxygen, carbon dioxide, water vapor, and hydrogen. So let's start our recap session. Before our holidays, we listed out the approximate composition of gases in percentages. Approximate means that it is a guess. It's not really accurate, but it is close to accurate. So nitrogen is always 78%. That's how we remember it. Oxygen, 21%. Carbon dioxide is 0.03% in the air. Noble gas is 1%, and water vapor actually varies. So the word vary here means that it actually changes. So what is air made up of? Air is a mixture of gases, mainly nitrogen gas, which is 78%, oxygen gas, 21%, carbon dioxide gas, 0.03%, and you have noble gases that makes up about 1%. So we didn't look into this more specifically, but I'm going to enter this now in our lesson. What are examples of noble gases? So as you can see from the pie chart, noble gases is 1% of the total composition of air. So you have helium, argon, neon, krypton, and xenon. Helium, here's a little clue about it, is that it's used and mainly can be found in rocket fuel and helium balloons. Argon is the gas that can be found inside light bulbs. And you have neon, which is also a gas that can be found in lights. And neon is a bit special because it has like a lot of color to it. Krypton can be found in light bulbs, but a very specific type of light bulb. And xenon can be found in camera lights. And this gas is also used in car lights. So what are the main uses of noble gases? Helium is used in airships and party balloons. Argon is found in light bulbs to prevent filament from burning. The filament is actually that little wire right in the middle of the light bulb. Neon is used in fluorescent lights to produce colored lights in advertising signs, and krypton is used for energy-saving fluorescent lights. Xenon is used in camera flashlights and also vehicle headlamps. Are those the only gases, though? Not really. There are other gases as well. So when we look into the breakdown of noble gases plus other gases that can be found, you have argon that takes up 0.9% of the noble gases, Water vapor can be found in air too, but it comes in varying amounts. Ozone is a type of gas that can be found in the atmosphere. And ozone, methane, 
are both in trace amounts, including the other noble gases like helium, neon, krypton, and xenon are in trace amounts. What do we mean by trace amounts? Trace means that it's only a little bit, so you can't really find it a lot, but it is there. Hydrogen is not found in air at all, and this is very, very good because it's highly flammable. That means that if there's hydrogen gas, it can catch on fire very, very quickly. So let's look at this water vapor being in varying amounts. So amount of water vapor in the air actually changes or varies considerably and can also be measured. Does air above the sea or the desert contain more water, for example? So if you look over here, these two are places that you can find on Earth, but the air composition is actually quite different. So if you have a little bit of a think, air above the sea would be the answer to this question. It's also because if you look at the desert, there's not a lot of water surfaces, so water cannot evaporate enough as it can do that at a place near the sea. Let's now move on to properties of gases. So what do we mean by property? Property here means a characteristic of something. So these are our learning objectives of the day. Briefly describe the physical and chemical properties of gases in the air and also list out their main uses. So what are steps to success? Today, you should be able to describe the physical properties of gases, describe their chemical properties, describe how to identify them. And what we mean by identify here is how do we test for them? How do we know that they're there? And the last one is to list out the uses of these gases. So let's start off with the very famous oxygen gas. So oxygen gas, you can see, it consists of 21% of the air, and we usually draw it or write it down as O2. Well, what does that mean, O2? It actually means that oxygen gas is made up of two molecules of oxygen. Oxygen gas is the gas that is released by plants as the product of food making process called photosynthesis. And when we talk about physical and chemical properties, physical properties refer to the color and does it have a smell? So can you see oxygen gas? Not really, actually no. So it is actually colorless, so that's a physical property. And it is also odorless, means that it doesn't have a smell. The chemical properties of this oxygen gas is that what kind of chemical reactions can it do? So oxygen gas, it supports combustion, that means burning. So without oxygen, then burning cannot be sustained. So how do you test for oxygen? It is to, to look at a glowing splint. So this is what happens. So a glowing splint is basically a thin piece of wood and then you actually burn it with a Bunsen burner and then you would blow the flame away. So you get what we call a glowing splint. So in this test tube right there, it actually contains oxygen gas. So you can see that the glowing splint turns to a burning splint instead but then not all of them will burn, but it will make it relight. So we say oxygen gas relights a glowing splint, and that's how we test if oxygen is actually present. So what are the main uses of oxygen gas? In living things, oxygen gas is used during cellular respiration to actually produce energy. And oxygen gas can also be condensed. So remember the word condensation. If you remember our song, condensation vapor turns to drops. So this is a change of state from gas to liquid. So when oxygen gas is converted into liquid oxygen, it can actually be used for rocket fuel. Carbon dioxide gas, we have 0.03% of it in the air. So it's 
drawn or written down as CO2. It means that it's made out of two molecules of oxygen combined or bounded to one molecule of carbon. And this carbon dioxide gas is really important or, well, it is important, especially for plants, but it is also the type of gas that affects our environment. So there's two ways that carbon dioxide gas can be released into the atmosphere. Number one, carbon dioxide gas is released as a waste product of cellular respiration. And number two, carbon dioxide is also a greenhouse gas. So this is also released from burning fossil fuels. What are the physical properties of carbon dioxide? It is also colorless. That means that you can't see it, there's no color, and it is also odorless. It means that you can't smell it either. The chemical property is that it doesn't support combustion at all. Unlike oxygen, oxygen gas supports combustion. This is why carbon dioxide is actually used in fire extinguisher. The test for the gas is that we, it changes the colorless lime water to form white precipitate. So if you look at this video, that's lime water and it's actually colorless. And somebody is blowing air into the lime water. So when we breathe out, we actually breathe out carbon dioxide. So you can actually see the changes here. So the lime water was clear, but now it becomes cloudy. But we don't talk about it being cloudy. We say there is white precipitate. So it does turn milky, but we'll use the term white precipitate to explain the changes that we can see in the lime water instead. Some of the uses of carbon dioxide for us human beings is that we use it to make carbonated drinks like fizzy drinks. We also use them in fire extinguisher. And when we solidify carbon dioxide, it forms this thing called dry ice. So dry ice can also be used to keep food fresh. Water vapor is actually found in our air, but we don't have it in this pie chart because water vapor varies a lot. Water vapor is basically H2O, which is our water made up of two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule, uh, sorry, two, oh yeah, that's right, two molecule of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. Actually, it's atom, not a molecule. All right, it is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen, and that makes one molecule of water. Sorry about that. So water vapor is actually the state of water when it is in gaseous state. And the amount of water vapor in the air is what we call humidity. Humidity varies at different places and also varies at different times of the day. What are the physical and chemical properties of water vapor? It's also colorless and it's also odorless. The chemical properties is that it doesn't support combustion, it doesn't support or it doesn't form any white precipitate in lime water, but it does change the color of cobalt chloride paper from blue to pink. So the test for water vapor gas is to use cobalt chloride paper, which is originally blue. And you can see from this GIF that the person is heating up that cobalt chloride paper. And when this person heats up the cobalt chloride paper, it's actually evaporating the water into water vapor away from the cobalt chloride paper. That's why it returned to its original color, which is blue. Sometimes you can't really see that cobalt chloride paper is actually really pink, but I hope that this picture will actually help you see that it will turn pink when it is exposed to water. This is just an extra bit that I think is pretty important because we talked about the uses of the other gases. So what about the uses of water vapor? Water vapor can also be used as steam for cooking and it also can be used for energy production. Now let's look into nitrogen gas. This is the most abundant in the air. 
sorry, it's not H2, it's actually N2. So I think I made a mistake there. So let us edit this actually. So nitrogen gas is actually N2 instead of H2. So it's N and N. So later I'm going to update our slides because it's actually a little bit of a mistake right there. So N2 is nitrogen gas and it is the most abundant in the atmosphere. Nitrogen gas is released into the air due to volcanic activity, but also and mainly bacteria in the ground releases nitrogen gas into the air during this process called the nitrogen cycle. The physical and chemical properties of nitrogen gas is very similar in the fact that physical properties, you can't smell it and you can't see it. So it's colorless and orderless, but it doesn't support combustion and also doesn't form white precipitate in lime water. And there is actually no simple test for nitrogen gas. But nitrogen gas has a lot of good uses, for example, making fertilizers. It's also used in fire extinguishers, similar to carbon dioxide. Nitrogen is also used to make nylon, which can be made into the clothes that you wear. Now let's look at the noble gases and their main uses. We actually mentioned this a little bit. So the noble gases make up 1% of air. We have helium, argon, neon, krypton, and xenon. Helium, you can find it in rocket fuel and helium balloons, argon in light bulbs, neon in advertising lights, krypton in energy saving light bulbs, and xenon in camera lights, also the headlights of cars. So noble gases also is colorless, it's also odorless, it doesn't support combustion and doesn't form white precipitate in lemon water too. And the test for this gas, we don't actually have one. So let's look at our steps to success. We briefly described the physical properties of gases. We also described the chemical properties of these gases. And we also talked about how to identify some of these gases and list out the main uses. So if you look at our learning objective, so I need to change this one. I'll update you guys on your classroom. So Google Classroom. So it's when we talk about physical properties, we're looking at it, is it colorless or odorless? And chemical properties, mainly here, it's about chemical reactions actually. Okay, so let's get back to the learning objective. So we briefly described the physical and chemical properties of these gases. When we talk about physical, is it colorless? Is it orderless? And the chemical properties is what kind of chemical reactions does it support? Does it support combustion? Does it not? Does it change like lime water from colorless to form what precipitate? And we talked about the main uses of oxygen carbon dioxide, nitrogen, argon, neon, and also helium. So that's actually it for today's lesson. I'll see you next lesson, guys. Thank you for your patience and have a good day.